I'm spinning the camera and my hey, wait. corner is still green. Oh yeah, this looks great. Yeah, I can see it on the screen. Fine. Yeah, it, it literally okay. was just that there was no reason for me to be streaming 60 frames per second. Why have I been streaming 60 frames per second? To show off. To show off. To show how cool you are. I think that's there, important. there are definitely people who will get mad when anything is not 60 FPS well, or I higher. Yeah. I don't make it cool. Uh, <laughs> are you? I really do. Look, look at the movies I watch. Like, do they seem like I make things for people who care about frame rates? Again, again, as someone who dates cringe sometimes. I'm, okay, I'm super low in audio. Is that just like volume? Yeah, are the rest of us to... quiet or loud or? Tony, you are dating cringe. You are going to That's... lose subscribers. Let me, let me That's fine. I, I want to lose subscribers. Remember, I talked about this. How, how I've been I trying sound... to make my Twitter, Twitter followers lower for like years. How do I sound now? I have literally no idea why the microphone volume would have changed. Unless me ending the stream adjusted it. I didn't notice. <laughs> Akasaka Spicy says dating cringe actually gains you subscribers. That's not, I think that's actually true. Uh, yeah, that's true. it's possible. It it's possible that an audio device shifted based on you doing that. I that, that check that, that out first. Uh, how to, is my audio good? Should it be louder? Chat. I don't know why you need just little... can't just know what I want and do it. And do it. And do it. I feel so, that way about like I like so understand the limitations of computers and accept them for everything except for audio devices connecting. That shit is bullshit. Oh, that shit. It's, it's, I mean, that it's because it do, it doesn't know what I want. It's assuming yeah. if I plug something in that I want it, and I don't. I'm just plugging it in. I'll tell you. Right. I'm it. just plugging it in. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Still quieter. Um. How am I now? How do I sound yeah. now? Okay, Powerful. I think. Powerful. Cool, cool. I lost 15 okay, I... viewers in the in the great I... reset. Can I talk about the Snoop Dogg wine? Oh yes, yes. please talk about the, the Snoop Dogg only wine. thing I want to talk about right now. Okay, everyone needs to watch this right now. I don't know if you've had the Snoop Dogg wine. I've actually had Why it. Why didn't before. you tell people to watch that before we when when people were waiting for us to come back online? Cuz well, we right now I'm just running around to the bathroom. We weren't stuff. online. Um so like I've had the Snoop Dogg wine. It's like uh it's like a pretty sweet red wine. It's fine. I didn't know that there was an an app that would allow you to watch augmented reality snoop dog talk to you from the water bottle of wine that's um, jammy oh goodness all these years yeah jammy discovered jammy downloaded this and discovered it it is i will say that this is easily as frightening um as as the uh the 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 tiktok guy oh. i love this delays caused by house shifts um, I love all this just like stuff that's left. It really is just like cute how much this game is a culmination of so much of their stuff, but the fact that it is so, so blatantly a riff on SCP. <laughs> yeah, it really is, but what a good idea. Yeah, I mean, what, uh, hey, make a make an official like, SCP game. Yeah, I was about to say, I feel like is. SCP is like up for grabs. Am I wrong? No. Yeah, it's certainly not copywritten. So. Yeah, what are they gonna do? Put you in a containment cell? <laughs> use the really... use the femur breaker on you? That's basically the extent of my knowledge of SCP. <laughs> I, I really love it. I really love um, when guys tell me about SCPs, and, like tell me SCP stories, and I can just like pretend to listen and just chill. Can you date Zoomers? Damn, that. I mean, savage and correct. Wait, Listen, did, didn't... Tony and I both are dating a Zoomer, and not the same one. It's before Zoom anybody gets any, excuse me. anybody gets any wise ideas. <laughs> Zillennial. Oh, Lottie <Lottie-freaking-da>. freaking dog! <laughs> to this high-class millennial over here. Yeah, cool. So he also watched the Rugrats. I don't care. <laughs> I 
I'm dating an authentic Zoomer because he listens to SoundCloud rap. Yeah, my Zoomer, my Zoomer boyfriend uh, calls me bro. And when I say calls me bro, I don't mean occasionally. I mean like 13 times per sentence. Is that a mac macro or microaggression at that point? But I'm I mean, I'm not. I, 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 don't, I know. I'm I know. We've, we've had. We've had this conversation. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't. People call me bro and dude and man and stuff. I don't. I don't care about that. Um, but it's weird <laughs> hearing it a hundred times. Oh, hi, Cop Uh I, well, I, I also it, the the vending machine. <laughs> I think it's less that I think it's less that someone's calling me that, and more that like my boyfriend is calling me that. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> Oh bro. no, I love that. Yeah, what 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 could be more intimate than being called bro by your yeah. I mean I, I don't disagree. Hello? <laughs> it was just an uh, an adjustment. <laughs> hey, excuse me. I love this guy. There you are. You are here about the job. Janitor's oh, assistant. You need to go to the interview. I like that this go ends up being an entire character arc for Jesse Faden. Thanks. Where you both become Elevator that way. the Got janitor. It. Where you Very have good. to I'm uh, I'm go through Jenny. a lot more trials to become the janitor's you assistant you can than say the protagonist of this game. They don't hire you. You have Honestly, fuck yeah. There be work for the axe. Take them behind the sound. I've done enough night shift loader jobs to know it makes us come off weird. Ati the janitor is a friendly face in my book. Hell yeah, working class Somebody hero. No face at all. Yeah, it, it really is. Think about it. No face. I, it is really so nice that she's like, yeah, this guy's all right. As soon as she sees right. him, she's That's not it. like, oh, a weird, creepy janitor guy. She's yeah. like, you're my bro. Yeah, she's like, oh, thank God, something comforting, something normal here. Yeah, something normal, yeah. That's great. I, I, I think that's they do a really good job of writing Jesse to be somebody who just like seems like just a random person you would encounter like on the streets of New York. Or honestly, she comes off like she would be she would live in Olympia. Hell yeah. Yeah, she's clearly like, like. The, the, the fact smell. that she's kind of like yeah, had this, her. as we will find out I later, had this kind of like first time I saw really poster. kind of traumatic they life and bounced it. between kind of like odd jobs I've been between to it. Pull it down um, ever since. Really like will you help? that character is actually like built up from that moment. Like you, you get this sense of her. I like the idea half of why Jesse is hot as the writing of hers like that. Yeah. No, she, she's, I don't know if it was intentional or not, but they write her very, like, chill dykey. Yeah, she's chill dykey. She's, like, very, like, you you rarely see a woman who's written, like, like an everyman male character would be written. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, that's intentionally, it seems intentionally, like, what they're doing, and it comes off as, like, really, like, yeah, working class dyke for her. I, I do think... And this is maybe a, a critique of the, the limits of media. Part of what also makes her easy to read as a dyke is that she doesn't have uh, a love interest in this game. Yeah. Because, <laughs> like, girl, I, I've talked about this before. I think when we, way back when we played Silent Hill 3, where it was like growing up, I just thought that Heather Mason was supposed to be a lesbian. And it was entirely that, because she just spends the I whole game for a moment? Uh, being basically you know disgusted and mind. horrified by every man that isn't her father. Dylan. <laughs> yeah. 17 years and then I was like, oh, no, that's just that's just because they wrote a game where a female character doesn't have a male love interest. And so therefore, <laughs> like, that's so unusual in media that you just assume, oh, she must be gay. But it does really, like, open up her character arc to, like, not be defined by that. Yeah. Um, you know, um, and, and yeah. She's also got a really good. Other reasons, look is iconic. Uh, another thing I like in this game is that it I has some of these, so many things that you see really early on that, like, you literally like. There's stuff that, like, like these that you don't come back to till like hours into the game. 
And you have to remember, like, oh shit, yeah, there's like a clearance door, like all the way over here that I can mm. go into now. That's the um, that's the 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 Dragon Quest design thing, right? Is that is that Dragon Quest? I always, I mean, I associate it with Metroidvanias, but. Sure, sure. No, that was just like a, a thing that the the, the Dragon Quest uh, people talked about, just being like, it's very important to show people a thing that they can't do something with, uh, at the you know as soon as possible. Yeah. Oh, that's a good. That's a good design ethos. And that's pretty accurate from having played a couple of Dragon Quests now. That they're like, the Dragon Quest is very much littered with things that you can't interact with, and you notice, and you're like. Huh? What what that's what that's about? And then you like go through it much later. They're very important. I, I, uh, I love the the dumb bits like this, which in this right here, which also nail the the tone of SCP stuff. Just like avoid the phrase Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very like stuff like this is so fun to write. Yeah. Like, like I. I feel like it, it sounds diminishing to say that this is easy to write, but it's also like it's easy and fun to make something that like uh, immediately is also fun to read. Yeah. Um. Like, it's like the reason why like I think SCP type stuff, uh, kind of like caught on in the way that it did is because it's got like a very, um, it's got a very concise formula to it. Like you, like the the whole idea of like that wiki is like, oh, it's got like this formula, and you can just like insert certain things in, and there's like really formalized parts of it, like parts of the entry, and then there's also like informal kind of like not necessarily explicit, but like agreed upon ways that you talk about it, um, that lets people kind of like write a ton of different like really short, basically short stories out of it. Yeah. Um, so, like, the fact that they're copying that is, like, they're not just copying, like, the themes and ideas. They're top, They're copying this, like, writing formula that makes it easy for them to, like, kind of, like, spit off, like, cool, fun, and interesting and, like, engaging little short stories with each one of these, like, lore items. Yeah. Uh, which is, like, shit. there are a lot of games that have, like, lore items and such that are, shit, like, shit. pretty boring and un uh, uninteresting. Uh, you want me to pick it up? Uh, but they have, like, this... Really? But because they're using that format, they're, like... They're kind of, like, pushed to... To be telling interesting stories effectively with this, rather than, uh... Um, getting, getting hung up in... In, uh, in the process. Um, I think another thing that's interesting too about like the way this uh, ends up working too with this is that it's like something's outside. They they oh, have to mistake. they have to like write stuff that all fits into a larger lore and kind of capture because like that's the thing of SCP is that everything written in SCP kind of becomes canon to an extent. So even when they right. have to have fun, it has to be fun but within a canon. And they capture that in this game where there's stuff you find that is basically just dry lore and is like. Wouldn't this be a creepy concept? Uh, and then there's stuff that's like, oh, here's just like a funny concept that we turned into lore. Right. It allows them to like keep riffing, which is uh, honestly really important because it kind of like gives you the space to like spend less time establishing and more time like uh, storytelling. I've uh, argued before that I think a lot of people fail to understand the like potential for like a mood Objects to be like a palate cleanser and i feel like if you can consume something that's scary or something that's funny or something that's fun or whatever but if you don't if you don't ever stray from that tone then you know it, it can be a fun experience but at the same time like you won't have like it, it loses its energy after a while i feel like whereas if i feel like i'm playing a spooky game or whatever and there's like a thing that genuinely is funny and just lighthearted, and then going back to that scary or whatever is actually like very intense yes absolutely no i think that that this that place. contrasting uh Where am I? like you can't keep somebody on the same emotional beat forever like they'll just get exhausted and they'll lose energy you have to like kind of shake it up for this stuff to be like um interesting like really uh captivating to people 
I think we've like talked about this before, but like uh, Jordan Peele is really good at this because like he's uh, yeah, and you know he's talked about it in interviews and like the line between comedy and horror. Uh, and he's really good at setting up a lot of like really funny dark humor in order to like make the horror payoff even more intense. Um, and I think he's really successful at that. And I think it's yeah. a, a main line to a lot of like good horror. And it's probably the re it's the reason why SCP works is because like you can have SCPs that are kind of jokey and you can have ones that are super serious and take themselves way too seriously. Uh, but because they're all kind of like nestled together, you can kind of like get these like waves of different like um, feeling that all come back to the same premises. Um, so they all in feel like they're part DNA, of like the same uh, like piece of music almost, that, um, but they're hitting like different different tones. Right. Lose and you're well. Fine. As a side note, people in the Thank chat are pointing out. Yes, that is that's Alan Wake's voice actor. Uh, uh, Doctor Darling. Yeah, Doctor Darling is is the voice of Alan Wake, but he's he's playing he's doing like he's he's speaking up like a little bit more through his nose, yeah. whereas like Alan Wake kind of speaks down in his throat. But it's like if you hear it like this first line, you'll hear that it's Alan Wake. Objects of power can cause or be results yeah, I can't of hear AWE. It, it's it's the way he pauses because they have the exact same yeah. kind of like <laughs> delivery style. He's just like talking like basically like slightly higher pitched because he's playing like a, a goofy scientist character rather than right. a, a very self-serious horror writer i think we're just gonna have to like address the elephant in the room right now i feel like we need to get it out of the way yeah um dr darling is smoking uh, honestly so it's so it's such a quality in this game that they have jesse faden and dr darling Two, two yeah, of the yeah. hottest game characters yes. <laughs> ever ever made, both of them. Because Doctor Darling's For great if you're, if you're into like the mad scientist trope, but he's also like goofy, like a dad. So you yeah. get both. Oh yeah. Here's the oh, <laughs> the chat just he's hot. He's hot. <laughs> both of them, yeah, like both of them are really hot video game characters because they're not like hot people or like hot made up characters they're hot in the way that your like work crush is hot yeah no that's yeah, really yeah, yeah, yeah. It. or like the teacher that you have like your like college professor that you have a crush on or whatever like it's very much like mm. they have like that lived in quality uh where they're like charismatic and and the like compelling time. but they are also just fucking chilling uh, also, huge fan of like the way the board is written, where they they speak in these like slash terms, which yeah. kind of implies that like they are using a word or a phrase or a concept that doesn't okay. have like a direct no, translation. It. So it's like uh, control the gun slash house, where it's like okay, what they're referring to here is the gun, but the gun also refers to the house that you're in. Uh, and so it's like, yeah, it's every everything they say, like, we'll have like two or three different translations to convey the entire concept. Yeah, yeah, I, I really like that. that. That was a very clever way of making them seem really alien. Um, uh, like they're using all of these words to, to talk to you that have like these multiple layers of, of meaning. It's, it's very fun. Isn't the house the setting of the game too? Yes. So the the house is is what the bureau, which is what we're in right now, uh, is is based in. It's a thing called the oldest house because it's a giant structure that has been there forever, and which changes in size and is massive. But only people who have basically been like awakened to the objects of power and altered world events can see it. So like we're able to see it, but like no one else was. One thing that I appreciate about Control is that they, 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 um, they have the, 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 the consistency of their philosophy of, like, using this brutalist architecture that makes the game, like, very, um, uh, they're, they're making a regular office building seem very, like, unreal and uncanny, um, and they do the same thing with language really frequently, like, like, calling this, like, alien entity that is, like, uh, overseeing you 
the board as if they were like an ex a, a, an executive council of a bunch of people i think is a great way of them kind of like uh using using their proper nouns effectively rather than like making up some like abstract sinister spiritualized word to represent them they're using a very mundane one yeah um, to create that kind of like uncanny fisher um by like almost understating how uh how, how weird the stuff you're encountering is and, and it makes when they say things that are like immediately translatable like we appointed you like all the mm. more sinister <laughs> yeah right because they're like that they are like you we will the gun you like they're very good at like uh yeah when there's like when there's double meaning in 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 the the single words that they're using too um it's pretty good it spoke to me and it was just it kind of like pushes you to like think about everything that the board says like a little bit too much you know what i'm happy happy to be here Hell yeah. Uh, you get these little these little SCP style write ups. Uh, also, sidebar, I love that you have the what it's the Polar Polaris, right? Like that's what we're talking to. That is basically you, the player. Mm -hmm. um, I love that it's basically just the same thing from Beyond Two Souls, but good. <laughs> So yeah, basically you can only wield the gun if you are uh, chosen slash you choose to become the director. Yeah. I agree with Vessels that an alive gun needs to look like the flesh gun from Videodrome. Also, <laughs> uh, Things have quite a down outside. But underrated uh, biomaterial gun are the guns in uh, existence, which I really wanted to rewatch because that is a fucking really fucking funny movie let's let's uh, uh let's hang out and rewatch it also i i do like the way they do the 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 live gun by it just being this like weird jittering like almost looks like a rock yeah oh it's pretty cute the way it's alive yeah yeah it's just like a bunch of like segments that are kind of like floating in place but like not entirely stably existence has is an ending that made me literally laugh uh I think it's a fun movie. It's funny. I like <laughs> Exosense. I don't know. I, don't... I think it's a good movie. <laughs> I think it's goofy. a very fun thing to watch. It's very, like, hokey, but it's also, like, clever at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Like, it, I don't think I don't think that Existence doesn't think it's weird. Like. Yeah, yeah. I think there's some... I think, I think there's something... Oh, sorry, what was that? No, it's just, like, it feels self-aware to me. It's just, like, very, like... The like, it's charming the way it talks about like the era of video games that were happening when this movie was being made. Yeah. Um, and also like, like, just that like, intersecting with Cronenbergisms. Um, yeah. Like, you will like, even if you like don't like it as a movie, you'll probably have fun. It's it's the good video game movie, but I I would actually yeah, it's, say it's still probably the most pressy. It's. It's probably the best movie about video games that anyone made about video games. Yeah, that's for sure. Like, on purpose. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, I don't know. I just like it. I feel like, I don't know. I feel like Cronenberg, I feel like it's very easy probably to, to take Cronenberg movies too seriously. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where I really do think you're allowed to laugh at them, too. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's, that actually is, like, probably especially true for existence yeah uh, of course existence because it definitely does have like certain opinions or thoughts about the se severity of video games <laughs> I, right and i think that's i think that's also having a little bit of um poking a little bit of fun in at video games expense yeah too yeah. Uh, definitely 100 percent. for more for yeah i i do uh, also cool. love in this game the way like you'll get stuff like this where it's just like what's the hiss <laughs> well <laughs> you're gonna find like the game will just throw information at you that will make you go like well what's that and the game is just like i don't know you're gonna have to find out i guess you're gonna have to fucking find out huh uh 
But yeah, I haven't I haven't seen Existence in Fra. I think that was actually the first Cronenberg I saw. Yeah. The way that I like the way that I saw Existence was honestly magical because like I happened upon it on some channel at like 11 p.m. at my parents' house and it had like definitely been at least like 20 or 30 minutes into the movie and I was like, you know, I kept being like, all right, in like five minutes, I'm going to switch away in five minutes. And then it just like kept giving me reasons to keep watching it. Um, yeah. And having no idea what to expect or what's even happening. Really great way to enter that movie. <laughs> uh, really love the fact that it immediately updates this. Um, yeah. It's so good that it's also like a totally different look that makes her look like 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 a like she's a, the director. Like yeah, it's a it's very like girl style. boss. Yeah, like it's like a complete. It, it's like this is what you would look like if you became the boss in a normal way, <laughs> and and not uh, because you broke in here and just picked up a gun. Secure line of communication. Um, the thing we're gonna need to do though is to solve the lock room thing. As, as soon as possible so that you can write the best outfit in the game. That's my personal goal. The dead man? Which one was it you said? The the outfit you get for doing the luck puzzle. Yes, um, yeah, no, as, as, as soon as we get okay. to the luck puzzle room, I'm gonna take the time to do it. I don't remember how far in the luck puzzle room is, but it is a really good one. Uh, I'm a big yeah. fan of that one, and uh, her janitor look is actually really cute. Oh, or her yeah. janitor assistant. The the fact that this game lets you basically play dress up with her is so funny. Yeah, it's so good. Um, I, and why not? Why wouldn't it? You know. Dress up, oh. girl boss. <laughs> girl boss, dress up. Um, I also I I kind of agree that Trench's messages are tedious, but I also find them very charming in that kind of remedy too serious sort of way. The the uh the the element that Lake Scum brought up of the game being like uh video super video gamey with like the lore being like the his entity known as the. Uh, the his entity appears a variety of enemies. Each can be defeated with a special move, like stuff like that. Yeah. yeah like uh, the grunt type is here in waves, but they sound they sound very like a uh, greedy game strategy. Guy. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Trench is a lot more of a Max Payton character. Because he's just glowering and smoking and, like, looking at the camera. Oh, fuck. Oh, hey, Fern! Fun! It's Fern! Fern, I'm so excited. Hello. Uh, Fern has entered the chat. Uh, and, and now up here we are. Uh... It's so good that we can have just, we could just type a Fern emoji that I probably have. Fucker detected. So I think you can, I think you can shoot these people and it just destroys them. Wait, I have the, I have the old Fern emoji somehow. Yeah. That's wild. Legacy. Yeah, you got you got patched in. I have these. Here's another actually really video gamey ass thing where it's just like anyway, we, we have uh you know these boxes of just things. <laughs> yeah, just, these these, just... these rooms are so funny. I love that you just get like, you get things like undefined or anything, just like weird abstract concept P things. And that's what you use to upgrade your weapons <laughs> and abilities. What you got here? The only game I like where I've read most of the lore. 
I love how these little treasure rooms are like gigantic, full ass like shelter rooms that are only only there mechanically to cr to contain one barrel. Yeah. Um, but they really were committed to being like, no, these are these are part of the lore, so they're going to be realistic size to hold a bunch of people in quarantine and to keep people safe. So they've got all of these things that are magic, like whatever magic, uh, impenetrable. Avoid. <laughs> I'm always saying this, actually. Avoid modern technology. Oh, Ringo, yeah. I'm glad that people uh, are getting a chance to, like, experience it even just as, like, a stream thing. Because this is, like, a, a super fun game that I really enjoy. Uh, but admittedly, I can definitely see how, like, the gameplay elements of it could wear on you. Yeah, I think that the gameplay <laughs> is, like... She's turning 46. It's pretty, it's pretty fun and good, but it does have a few Remedy games weaknesses. I think it's probably the most interesting one to play, though. It, it's definitely, like, this is the game where it's, like, I can give this game to people and be, like, now now you can understand why I like Alan Wake. Because this game is, like, <laughs> the the kind of accomplishment of what Alan Wake set out, started with. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're getting a second Alan Wake, allegedly, because of it. I don't oh, know if the, I don't remember if the physics were like this when I played the game, or if this is just the product of all the settings I had to do to make it streamable. <laughs> but it is very funny to be able to just run into desks and have them fall apart, like, immediately. It just completely fall over. Just the, the most, like, every desk is, like, two dressers and a piece of plywood that immediately start flying when you touch them. I love video games. Okay, the physics are just like that. All right, I the first time I played this, it was on the it was on uh, one of my roommate's playstations, uh, because it was right when they had announced the uh, Alan Wake expansion pack coming. So I bought the game in the DLC pass uh, and then played through all of it in anticipation of the DLC. Oh, and we got audio logs. Reminder. Really enjoy watching you um, run Jesse all over top of the meeting desk, steps. just knocking shit One. over. Search <laughs> the room for any she altered items it. or it's objects of this power. She, she's semi to Carry the altered item or object of power to the nearest safe room. Three, wait for bureau staff to find you and the object. If there are no altered items or objects of power in the vicinity, then reach well, your supervisor jumped right through it. Intercom and await further instructions. You know, a thing I always Thank thought was really nice about um, Dragon Age. Is that... Uh, that that is the name of the video game. Yeah, is that the, <laughs> the, the, the is that the Witcher one? Yeah, it's the Witcher. <laughs> it's the Witcher. It is yeah. the Witcher one. Okay, yeah, that one. Um is that they have like a setting where you can just set yourself to like casual difficulty or whatever and it just like makes the game such a cakewalk that you might as well just be skipping all the gameplay parts like the, the combat parts and i really respect that they i yeah. did they they did add that in this one they have the stuff where you can turn on like immortality and you can like kill enemies with one shot Ooh, i think the killing enemies with one shot is like a very good feature because there's so many times when it's just like these guys are a big sponge of bullets yeah and i don't want to keep shooting them anymore and i and i also think that there's like um so are you, like sorry gone um shoot i forgot what i was gonna say Oh, there, there are times when you, you might feel like you see a bunch of enemies or whatever, right? And you're like, I know 100% I am capable of defeating these enemies. Um, but I don't feel like doing it. And you should be able to like... get around it. Yeah, like, like it, it's one thing if you're like, wow, this is a tough challenge. And, you know, I want to test myself and see if I can do it. Yes, versus yes, like, oh, another here room here. to slog through. <laughs> Right, yeah. You mean the button like, that lets uh, me breeze, breeze through it. Is the hiss your enemy? Alright, it's our Just like. Enemy. 
I'm I'm gonna you know I can do this, right? But, yeah, like you, I showed you a few rooms back I can do this. <laughs> Holy shit, Hello? Pony is officially open again as of today. <gasps> it's oh. literally, hold on. I'm literally texting a friend of mine right now because we're going there tomorrow. Wait, what opened today? Pony, the, the local tomorrow? gay bar. Pony did? Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna hop in uh, Flinch's suitcase when he comes Damn. back. Damn. Uh, <laughs> the first well, street I'm driving now. What, Mia, what, what's, the, what's your source for this? <laughs> source, just trust me. Pony on, Pony, Pony on Instagram. They like just posted about it. I know. I'm now imagining. Um, I'm now imagining going to Pony and it's filled with people who watch the stream. <laughs> yeah, I, I love. I was just like, I love people recognizing Pony because of how often we've talked about it on the stream. Listen, Pony yeah. is the platonic ideal of a gay bar. Of like Pony, a good, sorry, of a good gay bar. I should let's, specify. Let, let's bring this PC to Pony. Yeah, I'll stream. We'll I'll stream this game from Pony. Oh shit. I am honestly tempted to just book it. I, I, a part of me is literally like, what if I just go to Pony after I finish this stream? But yeah. <laughs> who, who would be our DD? Who would what? Um, Uber. I guess I don't know how. Well, uh, mm, let's look at let's look at Uber <laughs> prices. I will split one with you. I'm so I'm sure. so tempted, but I'm like, yeah, but I know an Uber is gonna be expensive, and I'm gonna be on the hill tomorrow for Pride. Or not? Fuck no, I'm not actually not gonna be on the hill tomorrow for Pride. I'm gonna be. That's Friday. Oh fuck! Now I do want to get a date. Yeah. Well, text me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll we'll, we'll we'll be in touch. We'll be in touch. I got so excited by it that I forgot tomorrow is Thursday and not Friday, and that I have a date tomorrow <laughs> with my boyfriend. Aww. So you're just rolling to work from home. Wait, Jay. Jay. Um. <laughs> Jay, uh, what's it called? You should just bring bring your phone and live stream pony. Like a pony stream. <laughs> just just put it. I mean, it's gonna be. I'm gonna put it in like the hot top tab and get banned like, from Twitch. I'm just I'm just imagining you like uh, taking taking the stream to pony. Like and the yes. stream shifts over to like a, your your Uber or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> hey everyone, welcome to pony. We're we're speed running pony tonight. Uh, <laughs> Gonna see how many whiskey sours hey, it can take. You, you immediately walk in and then you go to the line of the bathroom. God, there's gonna be such a line to the bathroom too. <laughs> it's because we've all been too used to the bathroom and... any, any percent. We've all gotten too used to not not waiting for the restroom, so we just think we can go all the time. Damn, that's fucking true. <laughs> Taking that, dude. I, I, I was, I'm, I'm, I, you know, at work, like I drink so much tea and coffee and water and kombucha uh, that I'm just like running to the restroom like every two minutes. And then like I had a thought at one mo one moment where I was like, I could be, and I'm working from home, and where I was just like, I could be working in like a store or something and not be able to pee for like an hour. Yeah. It's the worst. Going, finding a bathroom downtown. I'm so glad Pony opened because that's a bathroom downtown now. I mean, I would actually even say that, like, even when I worked in like a, a small game studio with an office, right? Even then, going to the bathroom like 20 times in an hour would feel weird, right? <laughs> oh, I would, I would leave constantly at work to just go to the bathroom. I'd be like, "Fuck you guys! I don't get paid enough to." to piss myself yeah, no. saying like it's a lot yeah. <laughs> like it's a, it's, 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 it's not because i would feel bad weird. it's because i would look yes. weird <laughs> everything in this place like, so it would be like is she okay is this your enemy all right it's our enemy i i love that jesse immediately is that like oh you guys must be enemies Oh, 
What? Can you, what? I do appreciate that the enemies have somewhat stormtrooper. Oh fuck, uh, aiming. I I say immediately before getting blasted by this enemy. <laughs> this is one game where I was like, damn, they really should have given you regenerating health. Right? I mean, it's it's is not it... that bad. I I I I'm a little thrown off because I'm like still be readjusting, but yeah, like it's. It, it was a game that uh, I didn't find too challenging. And really, like I said, I put it on the PS3, so it probably automatically had aim assist on. Because it was yeah. a fucking console game. Uh, hissing sound yeah. that tried to invade me earlier. The hiss burrowing into everything in this place. Is the hiss your enemy? All right, it's our Oh my god, this dude just fucking tears through your health. Yeah, uh, like Scum is right. Like, running up to the blue heals was a little bit hard. And there's always, like, a ton of them, but their healing is very unsatisfying sometimes. Like, that, that, like, barely heals you anything. Yeah, no, it, it definitely much... becomes a thing where it's, like, you have to, like, uh, basically, like, as soon as you get the modifiers that increase how much they heal you, you just equip them. Yeah. Right, because it's like Damn it. It is not it is not enough to justify like to relative to how much damage these guys do. Yeah. Um Yeah, and like like Scum's pointed out, the way you get melted actively discourages flying around and using the fun movement abilities. I, I um, will say you get, like this, yeah. is, this is an example of where the console hit. version was better because <laughs> because the console had aim assist. And I'm wondering if maybe part of that is like the game was developed around aim assist and not around. Oh, yeah, it's just like that. I mean, well, couldn't you, couldn't you just turn it on? I could. I could turn it on if it becomes too much of a pain. Actually, I honestly, I might turn it on just for the sake of streaming now that I think about it. Uh, so maybe yeah. after this I'll do that. Oop. I keep forgetting that when I'm streaming, I don't actually have to be very good at a game. Like, I, like, I don't need to have the experience of, like, oh, look, I'm doing a challenge. Because I'm streaming it. <laughs> I'm doing a clown right, challenge. You're, you're performing it. Yeah. Got a game command from Zoe. Oh, that what is says, that? Stop dying, pussy. We'll All right. <laughs> Damn. Wow. Zoe. Firing shots. More like owned me. <laughs> Zoe more like owned me. Oh, it's like a pun almost. Yeah, my edible absolutely kicked in. <laughs> <laughs> this is a high quality conversation. Oh, fucking yeah. <laughs> He uh, really just walked. He really just stood up and just <laughs> brought a gummy to my face. That's what boyfriends are supposed to do in their job. Zoe firing yeah. a shot is a no, problem because she's right. saying they can't dodge. There's no dodge button. I don't have. I don't have the ability to dodge yet. My only dodge is just moving. There's no dodge roll. I keep thinking you're injured because the whole screen's red. Fair, fair to, fair to assume that. Uh, oh yeah, there we go. Weapon mods. I can mod my weapons now. Uh, ammo cost per shot. Yeah, we'll do the energy game from headshots one. And now uh, let's make ourselves a hub for this game. Walking up to an active shooter like, bro, you're fucking unbalanced. I can't even roll dodge yet. <laughs> Oh, shit. You did it. 
Uh, flowers, it. we are going to pony Hello. with or without you. Can you hear me? Uh, wait, you said it was on Instagram? Are you with us? Yeah, Pony Is Seattle. I didn't even know they had an Instagram. Are you still yep. every day. There you go. One thing that's great about Control is how many of the NPCs are, like, the most enthusiastic nerds you've ever met. Oh, they're absolutely. Like, they're, like, the fact that Jesse is, like, kind of cool, whereas everyone else is just like, oh my god, I ca can you believe the readings on this? And she's like, I, I did not go to college, but yeah. that's cool. Uh, probably, yeah. Those readings sound great. Outfits. Anyway, oh, I can't they, wait for these outfits. They, it always reads as if they they really want her to think that they're cool. <laughs> I, which is funny because so much of this game is defined by Jesse Faden, uh, like a like a dog just uh, desperately attempting okay. to get attention can't from Can't tell you how happy I am to talk to someone. Right, so exactly. Much. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I I think I'm talking about this this person who you're about to meet. Um, my turn. Should I lie? Every NPC in the name. game is basically the look I'm at this crap meme. I yeah. Have lied. Oh shit! <laughs> You're the new director. Hold on, we're coming out. Pope really wants Jesse to think she's for sure. Oh, she's absolutely the like horse the girl trying to befriend the Fame. wolf girl. Yes, oh my god. Okay, Jesse. I'm Emily. Look, somehow this hostile force, this hiss, that works. God, she's somehow so cool. the hiss I managed to Pope. infiltrate the building. I mean, at the same time, Jesse is trying that. to impress her Maybe because Pope is official. very clearly the unimpressed hiss. by everything she like says. The sound of poison gas leaking in. We're in full lockdown. It seems to have spread everywhere and to everyone not protected by an HRA. And extraordinarily wife for wife. you you are the director and that makes you special by definition trench is no longer the director obviously uh, i'm sorry i'm talking too much this whole situation is just a lot trench is dead shot ah i found his body and the gun do i tell her it looked like a suicide the service weapon. Also, and this can sound crazy, but he keeps appearing to me, saying things. Love these it's hard to make out, but he told me to cleanse the control point, push the hiss out. The whole room shifted around. You did that? And you entered the building when it was already in the lockdown before you became the new director? How? I'm not ready to tell her about you yet. A janitor let me in. <laughs> I love it. I, this is fucking unbelievable. It's, I can't even. Uh, uh, look, Jesse, right. I have Pope a million Pope absolutely has a Tumblr. <laughs> you probably have a million more. Like, do you know my brother Dylan? Oh, not yet. The introduction of Dylan. But there's something I need to ask you to do first. If you can cleanse a control point, so I like the, you the, the narration a lot. She's, there's a lot of like, oh, Jesse's like keeping a lot of stuff possible, close to her chest. Our options um, are very different. And there's the the game is like pretty good about like provoking those know, questions. But I like her already. She's the opposite of the faceless agency I've blamed for what happened to me for so long. I, I, it's, it, it really, like, immediately conveys how yet. much of, like, Jesse is defined by, like, trust issues. She's a part of. Mm -hmm. Yes. Especially, like, trust issues try. towards, like, institutions or anything I'm that, speaking like... for you, of course. Anything that she we can't, can like, together. talk to one-on-one -on -one or reason with. Mm -hmm. Okay. You with me? We did it before. Push the hiss out. Well, let's go do what she wants us to do. Can we save here yet? No. Um, wait, where's the 
Where is this his control agent she wants us to cleanse? Oh, there it is. Uh, we, we stole the time machine from the time boat. We used it to fix the time. <laughs> used it to fix the time. Oh, whoops. Well. Well. <laughs> the hiss has burrowed too deep. I mean, technically it did work. We just... Out. Them apart. We just also destroyed the person <laughs> that it was attached to. Oops. Jesse, over here. We need to make a plan, Jesse. I saw what you did, and I thought it was cool as hell. Uh. Yeah, it's definitely fucking sweet. However, I like the most notable distinction is that they levitate. An honestly very funny joke. There she is. What's up? I can't cleanse them. I saw. It was worth a shot. Thank you, oh, well. Director. <laughs> Jesse. I'm gonna tell her why I'm here. I'll risk it. Listen. Just the immediately, was like, I trust in an you. Incident in my hometown, ordinary, 17 years ago. The Bureau came in and covered the whole thing up. I've been looking for this place for a long time. That's enough. Maybe that's too much already. I can't tell her about Dylan and the rest yet. I've seen mentions of an altered world event case dealing with Ordinary. You were at Ground Zero as a child? It was one of the big ones, and before my time. And very classified. I can try to dig out some old files for you. My boss, Casper Darling, would know, but he's missing. I think he knew this was coming, or suspected. He came up with the HRAs, the Hedron Resonance Amplifiers. I think they're what saved us. Or a few of us. And Director Trench would know. Trench. The ghost, or whatever he is. He mentioned something called the hotline. Yeah, Addy, that's a good way to put it. Trust issues just make you trust too it's easily sometimes. It's another object of power, like the gun. An old Bakelite telephone, Oof. a direct Very line good. of communication between the director and the board. Maybe he can talk. She's to like so excited to talk about this shit. And Trench has years, yeah. <laughs> years of experience. She's just like, oh he fuck, do you want me to lure dump? Yeah. <laughs> Where is the hotline? It's kept in the communications department through the mail room. It's part of this sector, so we can access it even with the lockdown in place. We'll get the door open for you. Okay, that's my next stop. That's Tomasi's department. He's the head of communications. I don't think he had an HRA. He kind of made a point about not wearing one earlier. Office Keep politics. an eye out. <laughs> Everyone's got the guy they who brags about not having an HSA. That's not me. I'm not a director type. I'm not a leader. Why am I here? He's an anti-masker. Liter oddly Ooh, enough, yes, really weirdly like per like pres like prescient like with regards to there being answers, actual anti-maskers in this game, but it's just the HSAs. I'm not looking for proof. This is already it. More than enough. No matter what they told me all those years, I know it's real now. <laughs> I didn't imagine this. I want to be a part of this world. What scares me shitless is that I finally found it. Only to see the hiss destroy it all. Not all of it. You got a chunk of it. God, this game is just such a, like... I wonder if they took inspiration from, uh... Beyond the Black Rainbow. Yeah. 
Because it, it feels as if in the same vein of like Beyond the Black Rainbow. There's definitely like some Twin Peaks -y stuff in this. Yeah. So don't hesitate to ask me anything you want to know. There are no stupid questions. We ask everything, she's immediately like, all right, well, that one was a little. Uh, health recovery well, per element plus 20. Well, I don't need that. Um, all right. The only person you should fail is yourself. The door to so the comms department is just outside the boardroom back in the lobby. They should have gotten it open by now. All right, one sec. I got to open this box. Ooh, a personal mod. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. <laughs> Fine. The hotline should be in the communications department. Frame catch up. All right, you guys ready for some lore dumping? Oh, <laughs> dump away. I'm not sure. You said the hiss was here when you entered. Did you see anything like that outside before you came in? No. No, just inside. The source is internal, then. See, the oldest house is a sprawling complex with openings to other places as well. I, 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 I do like that, like, start uh, the running theme they have for describing the seeing it's good news. The lockdown this stuff holds. is like finding a the hole behind a painting would be the end. is a hint to the Pretty fact that later in the game, me, one of the puzzles, like some of the stuff you find it. is by finding holes that, behind Emily. paintings. Like it's for like some of the weirder side quests. You you know, I really love the, the mirror universe one. It's one of my favorite. This building, oh, the wall side quest. House is a I'm so excited to go through all the weird side quests it. in this game Transcends again. Its physical limits. Yeah, there's, I didn't finish all of them. There, York, there's some really good ones. There, there are unfortunately a, a chunk it's which are just like, building. clear the enemies this from this room. But like, the stuff where it's like, oh, there's like weird lore you find or like secret levels basically us. that you base wouldn't the really find we do otherwise here is essential but unstable the bureau prefers not to be noticed and we need strong walls to make sure nothing gets out so without you i never would have found the front door that's right okay willem defoe voice <laughs> this trench guy that's a really romantic I thing to say to him in my head just, uh, Without, Is he a ghost? without you, I would have never found Haunting the secret me? bureau uh, possessed by. I doubt we're talking about a ghost in the <laughs> traditional sense. But in Echo, the story was a little bit so more romantic. He was killed Jay, by the service but... weapon, your gun. Maybe it's his final thoughts <laughs> yeah, recorded by the bullet in his brain, like a, a deep space probe sending back data. But that's just a hypothesis on my part. I need the gun to research it. <laughs> but you better hold on to that given the circumstances. Because you're going to need it to shoot things. Yeah, That's what I'm for gun reasons. <laughs> you're not even you're not even because of the special powers. You just need a gun. Oh, trash bed. Thank you. That's me flying off. Can you tell me what an object of power is exactly? This is all, well, new to me. <laughs> Don't worry. I love going over the basics. See, so objects <laughs> of power are mundane objects that what? have supernatural energies and have developed a link to the astral plane and can thus be controlled. Immediately, which is just like going through it as quickly as possible. She's been so excited to tell someone. Volatile, it's like glad you have somebody who's like. Sense. Oh, what are your some of your? It's like they, it's Does their first date this? and they're like asking about their hobbies and she's like, oh Got my it. god. So my job Thanks. is like. Yeah. <laughs> So like you mentioned I saw in your profile that you're really into like French new wave. What what kind of is that? Oh my god. So <laughs> So HRA This is exactly is how I get that literally it seems that exact way. same reaction I, I had when uh, my boyfriend asked me ago when Dr. Darling like a single question out. about mirror. Well, I began analyzing mine as soon as I got it. <laughs> seems to emit a powerful short range frequency way beyond anything I've ever seen. Doesn't the timing seem suspicious? I thought that too. Dr. Darling usually likes to unveil his latest breakthrough in big presentations. With these, he just passed them out. Now his behavior makes me wonder what exactly he knew. Yeah, uh, so I'm glad I'm glad Thanks, you guys are liking Pope because she I'm is sure I'll have more questions basically one of the main characters just in this game know. after Jesse Faden. It's like Jesse, Trench and Darling, uh, and then you come back here basically between like every mission to talk to Pope. 
and like she and like she talks to you basically and is like oh yeah here's what's going on like here's what i've learned so far here's information you're gonna need uh very 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 clever to have her be excited to lord dump given <laughs> given her setup given that that is essentially her purpose like plot wise uh this guy's like a minor character as well we just haven't met him yet yeah given the amount of lore dumping that this game needs um it's kind of no surprise it, well yeah but it's also clever that they chose to insert nerds to do the job for you yeah <laughs> yeah, very cute. yeah they that they did go to the effort to make them charming enthusiastic nerds who um, they're like one of the things that i think is really great about this game actually uh in addition to all of the stuff that we've been talking about is how much all of these characters feel like co-workers who are like really do job. Like, yeah they and they have like, pretty different like the guy who runs like the scp containment level um is such a kind of like sleazy dork who doesn't really want to do his job um and acts all important about it um, it's like a very perfect like office type and the fact that they're just kind of like office types and they're like yeah we work in the like um yeah we we work in like the existential horror uh <laughs> government facility um it's it's a living i go i it pays the bills you know <laughs> yeah i know it's 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 like oh maybe they got There's into it because so they were interested in it but now it's just a job <laughs> Right, it's just a job. And the way that he, like, I think he in particular has, like, one of the the craziest, like, most horrifying jobs, and he is, like, the most, uh, this is just a job about it. <laughs> uh, Ringo, yes. So, they live in the, uh, and it's, it's, it's somewhat explained a little bit in this. Um, but the way they're kind of all tied together is that everything paranormal from the previous games are are basically fall under alter world events. So there is a cross. Oh, I can't wait until we. Can I love that there's like this room clearance level four. Like you, like one of the last clearances you will get in this game to get into this room covered in post-it notes. Um, but basically, like Alan Wake has like a canon crossover with this game because it takes place in the same universe. There's stuff that mentions the uh, town, I forget what it's called off uh, already from Quantum Break, which suggests that like the time thing is being investigated as an alter world event. And it is basically made canon that the universe of Max Payne exists because of Alan Wake's books. Like because right, Alan Wake are... got, the, got the ability to make things real, he, him writing, uh, I think it's the Alex Casey series in this universe, uh, is what created the Max Payne universe. Oh, I got a drink, coward. Hi, Sister Slug. Uh, I'm actually going to then take this a second to go grab uh, a drink. And also... Uh, to get a drink. Also, I'm definitely going to head out in 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. If you, if you want to head out now, we're going to go to a BRB, and then we can just come back. I guess that's true. I, I can elegantly just not be here. Although, Trash no bad, way, thank I like you for, for having me getting memes. Sorry, what? So that, although I, don't, I like talking to the chat when it's time out. Yeah, all right. You can, uh, you can talk, y'all can talk to the chat, and I will be right back. Bye. Hold on, I have to reopen FUBAR because right. I had to close it while I was trying to close everything to... To, to make sure it worked. Um, I will uh, be right back. All right. Hello. Is it just me and you, Tony? It's just me and you. Oh, right. How do you feel? About, how do you feel about dogs? What? I said, how do you feel about dogs? Dogs are all right. Yeah. Sorry, I'm still stoned. So. Yeah. Um. My. Feelings about uh, dogs <laughs> are that I am a cat person. The reason that I know that I'm a cat person is not because I have anything against dogs. I think dogs are great, but because like cats can 
cats are like the animal where they can do totally gross, horrible shit to me personally. I'm just like, oh, you're a cat. Um, and I just don't, I just don't have that with dogs right now. I may in the future if I end up living with a dog, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. becoming closely, closely acquainted with a dog. I may feel that way. Well, you know, I just realized, I feel like I like, um, like, how do I put it? I feel like I like fictional dogs and like, rep like, like representations of dogs. Um, and maybe I'm not a huge fan of like real life dogs. <laughs> Interesting. Like, I don't know, there's something kind of like, something kind of very animated about dogs, the way dogs are portrayed in comics and in media, etc. That's, I think, a little bit more exciting than dogs in person for me, at least. And I am usually a cat person. Yeah, I, my thing, my thing about dogs is that, like, like, they are an animal that by nature they have to go in public, which is cool. Except people have their own really strong feelings about how to train a dog and how their dog is supposed to behave towards both people and other dogs. Definitely, yeah. And that is something that uh, I think a lot of people kind of get wrong. If somebody is like, if somebody is like raising their cat weird, that cat isn't like, like, that cat isn't going to like run up and like fucking bite you. Yeah. Or, like, even if they did, they would be like, all right, I'm locking this cat in the door. But, like, <laughs> dog owners are very, like, this, like, this, like, human-sized dog is going to run right towards you with killing intent. And I'm just going to be calling after it, uh, and it's going to not look to me. And this is fine. <laughs> right. And that's also, that's also fair, uh, crazy, maybe. Like, I definitely don't believe in keeping, like, out the cat. That's, like, kind of the main one, but, like... The like, the, it's it's just a like dog owners are like can be really inconsiderate to like other people and also like other like dogs and dogs and dog owners. Um, but I but I support them. I mean, they're they're wonderful. They're wonderful and very very sweet. I, I, I have, I have, I mean, I know this is trite and kind of cliche, but I, I do genuinely enjoy the, the joke of like, you know, you tell a, you tell a dog owner that their dog sucks and the dog owner is like, huh? how could you say that when you tell a cat owner their cat sucks and the cat owner is like, huh, isn't it great? That's exactly. It really is a thing. I, it really, really is a thing. <laughs> it's obvious. Thing. We have I have I have definitely like learned that you know a, a, some sort of joking criticism or something about their dog like made them genuinely angry um, <laughs> despite the fact that with cats no one has ever been mad yeah yeah for real yeah, it's always saying a lot of dog people value their dog and their dog's desires more than me and my desires I like like, people just, I don't know what it is about dogs, like, but people just, like, anthropomorphize them in really weird ways. Um, also, yeah, Fern, I was literally just gonna talk about our friend Aaron, who, like, they have a cat named Goblin who loves to steal human food, and so, like, I will, like, go into their kitchen, and there, it will be a spotless kitchen, except for, like, one tortilla in the corner from this cat trying to steal it, and... Uh, our friend Aaron is like, that is so freaking cool. It is, it is cool. You know They're, what? That it person's is, right. It is cool. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, just, just talking about Goblin, the dog, the cat. Aww. The dog Aaron cat. Goblin, the cat, Aaron's Goblin cat? Goblin, the cat is an Aaron's cat, Goblin. Oh, he's really cool. Yeah, Goblin. <laughs> yeah. It's really cool. Yeah, friends telling the story. Sorry, I just got back. Like, I love the way that Eric, and the way that he says it too. He's like, God, he's so cool. <laughs> that, he like that's knocked great. this. Like, he just like knocked a tortilla to the kitchen table. Why? Because fuck that tortilla. Yeah. You know what? I trust his. Yeah, I trust his opinion. He got bored. Right. 
I I think I talk about my boyfriends like that. You definitely do. I, like uh, I'll definitely yeah, be yeah, like, my boyfriend just it, ordered a pizza and it's two a.m. It's <laughs> he's great. <laughs> side note: It's very funny that when I turn on the radios, nothing happens because uh, I had to turn copyrighted music off. So oh, that's funny. DMC. Uh, what game is this? This is Control, Sister Slug. It's a. It is the newest game by Remedy. Uh, do they have any more DLC coming out, or is it just they're they're kind of doing the blitz of it getting a bunch of attention? Yeah, I think AWE was the last one, right? There were like two expansion packs, and so they're probably just working on their next game right now. Also, as a side note, he, uh, big fan of the fact that this right here um, sets up the finding that bathroom like d almost an end game. Damn! Like, like you, you like it's it is an area you can find in like one of the end game areas. Is this, is that like kind of area that the pyramid sent us to to train enemies? But there's like chunks of the of the bureau that have been like brought there, and one of them is just a giant floating bathroom. And it's that bathroom. <laughs> oh dang! I didn't even notice that. Uh, I know it's that it's it's where you can find one of the like secret items that you need to get is like in that bathroom. Wait, the way that people are yelling Toho is making me think about my favorite video of all time. Is it's it been Toho? thirty seconds. Uh... I don't think Jay has the literal ability to play Toho. I'm gonna assume that that's not an insult and agree. There it is again, a welcome <laughs> message. Is it an insult to be bad at video games? I can't play Toho. I know that's not gonna happen. Um, it's, I mean, like a lot of games, it requires, it requires practice. Um, I think the thing about like, Schmups is that they're like they are designed to be like a, a really long process to learn and complete each and every one of them. And I think people who like who people who are quote unquote like that at Schmups um, oh, who play them a lot um, also like come to them with the expectation that oh I'm gonna spend like a long time learning how to beat this game one time. Yeah. Uh, and if I really like it, I'll like score attack it. But like this game should be by default hard enough that I have to spend like a really long time working. Yeah, it's like rhythm game shit, right? Like how yeah. rhythm game oh, people yeah, are absolutely. also sick in the absolutely. head. It is it is visual rhythm game stuff. It, um, I I won CC at a shmup before, um, and it was fun, but it like it was definitely <laughs> like I think like over a month or more of like. Yeah. just working on it i feel like i i i spent a long time before i could beat uh ikaruga and yeah that's hard that's yeah, hard it's really hard and i think that the way i recall i remember myself being on the final like the, the two final levels and just like being on like an entire different plane of existence <laughs> yeah <laughs> moving my stick around like expertly like it was some kind of musical performance it was just like my brain doesn't work like that ever <laughs> that was like the one time it did <laughs> i mean like that's that's the thing about shmups though is that you're like you you have to reach that like i remember like when when you're on like the final boss and, and the game that i once cc'd was um, uh, ESP Garuda, which is like a, uh, or ESP Garuda, uh, 2, which is like, it's by Cave, which is like, a kind of like, pretty different philosophy from, from Ikaruga or, uh, Toho. It's like, very, very fast, um, relatively, um, and getting on the boss, it was like, shit, like, it took me, like, it takes so long to get there that you're like, that every decision you make is like with full adrenaline like you are living in that zone because you know like yeah. it only takes one mistake mm -hmm. at that point absolutely um, uh which is uh spamming with uh hi marissa emotes oh i was gonna say uh, i i i also endorse the uh follow jamie train 
<laughs> yeah, follow Jammy for Toho Thursdays. Thursdays. That's very true. Speaking of that, she, 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 she is going through that. All of them? Yes. Oh, fuck. I just went to the bathroom. I will say, speaking she's, of. She's eaten several. Speaking of, hi, uh, Marissa. I should probably go. Because you are a hi, Marissa. Because I meant to go like an hour ago. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Tony, thank it's always a delight like to have you. Yeah. Great to see you, Tony. Bye. Bye. Wait, I got two people visiting. When are y'all coming down? Uh, well, oh, let's see. When's not. FC again? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, right. January. Right when is that? Um, yeah, I'll, cook, I'll cook for y'all. Yeah. Or, or just come tonight and I'll just give you some Odin. If I'm okay, going anywhere down. tonight, it's fine. Shit, I want some. Oh, yeah. Wait, no. I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop my Odin and I'm going to go go up to Seattle. No, and get, go no to bring, Odin. It, Odin. bring it. <laughs> bring it. Bring it to you. Yeah. Don't 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 even bother bringing Odin. flinch or flowers. Just bring the Odin and yourself <laughs> oh to bring. Oh my god! Uh, no, but you're have one of them. Have one of them drive you. But make you sure that you've got like a car. Oh yeah. Like, well, I think well, I think only flinch can drive. So unfortunately, flowers is gonna have to hold down the fort. You Sorry, just flowers. you just need like a hot like uh get get one of those portable like hot surfaces. They called you a bottom of flowers. I didn't call. Wait, hold on. I know flowers. <laughs> I said flower. You said Flinch was the only one that could drive. Yeah, which is correct. And also, the other thing is correct. <laughs> Jeez. Oh hell yeah! Here's the dead letters. Okay, I saw uh, a flower just frantically took out uh, his phone. <laughs> is flowers there with you? Yeah, and Flinch. Oh, flowers. flowers. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make them a bunch of good food. Mm. Aww. That's good. Mm hmm. Flowers uh, deserve it. Mm hmm. Alright, I'm gonna actually go now. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye, Tony. See ya, Tony. Uh, so here's the dead letters department where they get letters that might be paranormal or might just be uh, ramblings. Bye, flowers. Well, wow, dead letters is so. What a great, what a great ending to that too, right? You'll have to send me, in, have to mail me. I don't have a phone. I had to use it to make God. Yeah, <laughs> I had to use it to like specifically. The implication is like fight God. Later, sister slug. Bye, sister slug. Oh fuck! There's more guys. The audacity to put more guys in my I do like the big numbers above their head telling me how hard they'll be. Yeah, I find that very helpful. Do you do love the way that they kind of like <laughs> disintegrate? There's like a lot about this combat that's like super good. It's it's satisfying. Like, like as much as like it can be frustrating at times, you you feel satisfied when you like defeat enemies or mm -hmm. clear out an area. And the thing is, is like this game does like th that first encounter is like one of the worst because like those big meaty guys are like meant to be killed with like rocket launchers or like throwing things telekinetically. Yeah, yeah. No, they they really are just kind of there to to reveal to you that like oh some enemies aren't going to be really fun to do uh, bullet stuff with. Yeah. Uh, but I've already got the mod that gives me health uh, with headshots, so. Learned my lesson oh, yeah. from the first time I played this game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, anything that rage adds is very good at this game. Now we can, uh, and now we've gained the ability to fast travel. Uh, 
Oh, yes, yes. I think this is this gonna be one of the first of the kids. No, damn it. Uh, oh, 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 but I, it is around I here somewhere. I think it's on the first floor. Whopping eighty kilobytes. <laughs> Stolen by our friends at the CIA. The disc held the launch codes to Soviet nukes. <laughs> Uh, this is not the disc, of course, but one exactly like it. A perfect fusion of concepts vibrating in the Cold War era collective unconscious. A receptacle. It is a receptacle for dangerous energies to hone in on. And they did. We don't have the details, but when things started flying around the disc, it was transferred to us. It's an object of power. Oh, okay. Oops. Oh, and it can launch things telekinetically through the air. Uh, to date, we've launched <laughs> maybe three dozen pencils. And once, we even launched a cup. He's <laughs> so excited. So excited to tell you this. Love that nerd. Love that hot nerd. Telling me about the, the telling me about how floppy disks were stolen by the CIA. <laughs> oh my God! Please tell me about the existential crises of the Cold War. Yeah, I, th I think you're right because I'm almost positive that the first one is in the Dead Letters Department. So we're we're gonna find it before we move on. Yeah, I I want to say that it is on the first floor of this area. Like down in the direction that you're you're facing, I think. Yeah. yeah. Like go down, Oops. first floor. Turn around. Wait. Turn around. Go back. And then go. Yes. Right. Uh, yes. Right there. In in here. In here. Yep. That, right. There they are. All right. Let me check this file. Yeah. Real quick. Oh my god. My fucking visual memory. That I am. I am legitimately impressed that you remembered that that quickly that easily. I mean, I, I, I'm impressed I remember that this was where you meet them, but they're one of my favorite little ad additions. Um, I, I know that you can find these book club letters, like, all over, like, the game, and it just tells oh, you the, the story of a book club. club ones are really... Just, just falling <laughs> apart. Just a book club falling apart with, like, personal drama. Uh, it is, like... It's great, like, I, that is the thing, like, one of the things that's great is, like, that they do a bunch of lore dumping, but they also do a bunch of stupid office stuff. Yeah, like, like, uh, like, like basically lore dumping that is about, like, office politics. All right, everyone in chat, pay attention to one of the, the one of my favorite things Remedy has made. I got it so fucked up. Just perfectly nails, like, <laughs> creepy YouTube. <laughs> I'm really glad Control has its own finger family. <laughs> God, I love how you can't hear a single fucking word of the theme song. I'm so sorry, man. Oh, go to the <laughs> Dad says my mama went missing in action. She walked into the city and didn't come back. I don't know what missing in action is, but I sure wish someone would find her. I'll help you look, Telfer. We'll find your mama together. <laughs> Spoilers, but no wonder P6 ended up the way he did. <laughs> Together. I I think my favorite detail of it is that the girl's voice is clearly just a woman's voice, but the boy's voice is someone doing the most, like, guy trying to do a puppet voice. Yeah, it's fucking good. Oh, my God. Do as you're told. Don't eat mold. <laughs> 
don't have to listen to you. I'm still surprised that the plot line with the the mold lady we meet later isn't her trying to get you. Isn't her trying to mold pill you? Because she really fucking loves that. <laughs> I really love mold pill. I I remember like looking at when I was playing this game for the first time. I was like, it's really funny that there's a bunch of mold warnings. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in addition to all of the creepy stuff. Um, that's really that's a really funny joke and then like finding the bold area and be like oh and be like oh actually it's because there's of, of course there's also paranormal oh. mold oh, oh okay they're the, they're the other major enemy type god the mold enemies are such a the mold enemies are like actually like a pretty satisfying enemy to learn how to fight because they fucking suck to fight but once you figure out how to you're like all right cool i feel i feel uh smart now yeah, I think they're a good. They're they're a good enemy type to sh to shake things up just a little bit. It flies around and I it seeks devil curses. I I what I like about this is that it feels like it had to have been inspired by the the haunted toy skeleton video. Yes. Toy skeleton haunted oh, and possessed. <laughs> that uh me at some point i need to show you at the very least the first bad ben movie because it is yeah. a, a no budget uh found footage film that is basically a full-length version of that video because it's about a new yeah. jersey guy who buys a house to flip and like the first 30 minutes when all the ghost shit is going on he just doesn't notice it <laughs> because because he's too busy really being an funny. asshole Okay, that sounds great. Jersey it, dude yells at ghosts. It is. Uh, it is a three hundred dollar movie. Like the budget was three hundred dollars for it. Let's fucking go. And it's like a whole Jersey. series now on. Uh, I think Amazon. Lonnie got me really into watching them, and so I've been like, I'll just like whenever I'm like, fuck it, I'll just put on a ninety minute like no budget horror film. That's what I'll put on. He also gets when his ass beat by out, ghosts. By the way. Oh, do, are you I still love... down to go to Pony? Yes. I've been doing my makeup this whole time. Oh my god. <laughs> what? Yeah, but I wish I could go to Pony. There's well, technically nothing stopping you. Well, how much is it? Uh, how much, yes, how much there, there are the lifts to Pony? <laughs> no, there's not. What? Oh yeah, okay. I'll look that up for you because I love you. Well, I don't want to, like, because it's like, I'm going there on Friday, so I don't want to pay, like, too much money to just go tonight you know that's fair as as excited I as i am it, it is literally just the fact that it's like oh if i didn't have like stuff that I'm, I'm doing tomorrow morning and also uh that i'm going on friday <laughs> i would absolutely Holy just shit. drop I mean, it it's like not on the map anymore. what the fuck yeah wow literal gay erasure Literally gay right there. Uh, Tussle does the, the trick is to like watch it in the same way you would watch a YouTube video. Like that is that is how you watch the bad Ben movies. Uh, lift there is the same same price as it usually is, like thirty bucks, which is surprising. Mm. Mm. We are gonna be there in a oh. couple days. Someone killed this guy with letter <laughs> letter carriers. I do like how much litter they put in the entire I mean, it does look like an office that just recently got disrupted. They definitely were like, oh, we got physics objects this time. <laughs> Let's just, like, oh, we can strew anything we want about. Yeah. No, no wonder that you had to run this 30 frames per second. Thank you. 
I, I, I'm realizing reading this how much of this is is basically a joke about stuff that happens in the game, like the game that they're playing, like the book that they're talking about. How do you watch a YouTube video? Like, I'll, like, put it on while I'm, like, also responding to text messages or, like, uh, I have two screens, so I'll put it on, like, one screen and either watch it in bed while I'm responding to text messages or while, like, doing stuff on my computer. Like, not to say, like, oh, it's a movie you don't have to pay any attention to, but it's, like, you know, uh, uh, consume it as somewhat, somewhat uh, a content thing. Because it very much so captures the feeling of watching, like, a weird YouTube video. Oh, fuck. Alright, well that thing can just uh, can destroy shit, so I should not just crouch my cardboard boxes. Okay, running. The, the, it immediately like uses its physics to affect here too. Where it's like, yeah, that shit can get you because it can just ricochet. Yeah, the lighting stuff that they do is amazing, too. I love being able to see this through the actual walls. Give me that floppy desk. Yep. I am saving my game via this floppy disk. The floppy disk nuke can be bound. It's harder to hear you when I'm here. It's like the channel's been changed. The boards in charge here, their pyramids in the bureau seal. Are they really the ones pulling the strings? I'm not their director. I'm no one's director. Uh, yep, we can now uh, use Psychic. This really is the thing that kind of <laughs> makes this game. Yeah, no, I, I'm so glad that they correctly guessed that the first thing that power they should give you is uh, launch, it is telekinesis. The fact that you can fly in this game too. You know, there is a game that, um, gosh, a while ago, uh, Tim Rogers made a nice little article about like PS2 games that were like, that were kind of like ones that not a lot of people had played. Yeah. Um, and one of them was this like, it was just like some Western Mills shooter called PsyOps, literally called PsyOps. Oh yeah, yeah, I've played that game. I think I might have a copy of it somewhere. It's like, and I remember playing it on his, on his recommendation and actually being very pleasantly surprised at how uh, fun it was. Um, you know, especially for a PS2 game of its era. But it has like, throwing shit around physics on the PS2 that are yeah. basically like, what are, like, it was like the only other game that I've played that had telekinesis feeling like this fun. Um, other than maybe like Half-Life. Um, yeah, it was the Mind Gate Conspiracy. Uh, it has been a <laughs> long time since I played that game, but I remember it fucking rolling. <laughs> Imagine... <laughs> I love PsyOps the Mind Gate Conspiracy. <laughs> the mind, mind Gate. The Mind Gate Conspiracy. <laughs> oh my god. It sounds like that title sounds like too much of a shitpost to even be a shitpost in this game, in this day and age. I got it. Um, Just like you want this will help me fight the hiss. Oh, I really wanted to play Crystal Chronic. Is that the like re release one? For the the Wii one.
Oh, it's a totally different game from most of the Power Rangers. Nope. Nope. God, even like the sound effect it gives like when you're lifting up items is so satisfying. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. the fact that you can like okay. hit guys as yeah. you pull it to towards you. One of my one of my favorite things I do is the is the one too of pulling an object from behind a guy, hitting him with it, and then immediately throwing it back into his face. It's such a beautiful. Not only is that so satisfying, like one of those things where you're like. It's just so stylish, and it invites you to be, like, very stylish with your positioning. Like, it, it gives, like, this whole, like, other, like, skill layer yeah. um, to to using that power that makes it uh, really satisfying. Also, yeah, um, Addy Elman's bringing up the fun point. The, the way you can also just, like, if it does, rather than the thing where it's like, oh, there's no destructible items around, it'll just let you rip out concrete from the wall. Yeah. More, more info on different enemy types. My personal mods. Even just the design on the the shelters is so good. Emily said that the hotline can be reached through the mail room. I don't think of any other games that have like as much of a fun fun little uh mechanic as this like with regards to like telekinesis are basically just giving you like uh, a physics weapon yeah like ouch i mean there's certainly like a lot of them like i think the ones that i remember are psyops half-life or uh, half-life 2 i mean yeah Kind like of that physics portal object is pretty good. Oh no, you yeah, know, I, yeah. I, I, I really just any any Valve game. Yeah, they really did. I mean, like that was the thing. That was what they were like really selling their, uh, their engine on. And it feels like after that, like kind of tech demoiness of like, look at what we could do with like uh, physics objects. A lot of games really just kind of didn't follow that up and, and kind of yeah. relegated them. Just to kind of like, oh, look, we can. Uh, we're using them for like cool special, but not really uh, using them game for. Mechanic. Yeah. Um, we we we're we're that. showing off that we can do this cool trick, and that's kind of it. Yeah. I, now I will say actually, um, a, a non-gameplay, but like the probably one of my most. Uh, uh, physics object uses are knocking around dead bodies in Dark Souls. <laughs> I think that that's a really good one. And I really hope that Elden Ring is not taking. I'd be really sad. Ghosts. We've had many uh, I do like the file we find at some point that says that, like, this, like, NPR at Today, night radio show, show but also Night Springs from story. Alan Wake are both, Please. like, literally psyops. This is something yeah. I experienced recently. While staying at the Chili Pines Like, just Motel disinformation, like, like limited hangout, call. basically. I was in room 47. So like you My can get some lore from this stuff, program, but it's basically tells you like this is this, this is a filtered room. version of lore. Now the manager explained This is lore with bullshit. Years back, the body of a man was discovered under the bed. 
inside that wooden border that motel beds tend to have. And the body had been there a week, he said. Guests had stayed there, sleeping with the corpse a foot below him. They only found the body. Oh, yeah, yeah. and it's also like how they, the because it's a call-in show, that's how they Haunted find out about stuff. It's because people will call in. Yeah. Ever since. Yeah, they use it to kind of like find people. This guy's doing a voice that reminds me of the, the, the baby no from P.T. Dad was always such oh my a God. <laughs> When I woke up, I found myself. What do you think the of the theory that PT is uh, it was dark. is actually about Stifling Konami about uh, Kojima's experience Luckily, of Konami? I was able to push the mattress off and crawl out before I suffocate. I, I feel like I, I've heard this before, and I think that the timeline doesn't quite match up. What we call ghosts, like considering like Quincy was brave enough to tell his story. I but I don't know. It's possible. Whenever you it's it's one of those things where it's like the the main thing that makes me think it's possible is the uh, the fact that there's that line where it's like, don't you remember? It was like a year ago today or something, and Kojima was very insistent about the game being uh, unveiled at E3 on a specific day that happened to be like a year after he basically got fired. Oh. Like, that's that's the big one that makes me think, like, all right, maybe. Uh, there's this massive fucking thing, and then there's just... Who wrote this? <laughs> Report to Dr. <laughs> Darling. I think somebody... I remember somebody telling me that that is, like, tells you a lot of stuff that's going to happen in the game. Really? It is a it is a brick of text, so like it's a really good way to hide it because I never read it. Oh yeah, I can kind of see that. Oh, can I three CBB? I might be calling it sometime soon, actually. Especially yeah, if I, especially if I'm it. apparently going to pony. I, I'm kind of trying to get to the first point where it lets you save. Because I know it lets you save you once then? you once oh, you get you have it. You have, like, a boss right here if you go through that door. Yeah, I, we have a boss here, but then I think I can oh, save, like, yeah. right after that. Because it, um, I think the main way you save is at these, but so far it's just giving me fast travel still. So I think it wants you to defeat this first boss before it lets you save, like, correct, like, like a full save. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was just auto saving. It might auto save, but I think there's also a, a, a hard save. File manual. Yeah, we'll find, we'll find out after this. Oh so, yeah, this is the guy who is like, this is. This is the answer. Yeah, unless you're deciding that you are going to pony. Uh, well, you were doing your makeup, so I would feel bad. But if it's like, that, like, <laughs> I mean, like, I want to be there, but, but you're right. It is, it is a big, it is like a big to do. Oh yeah, that's right. You're not allowed to even get hit like twice. I just see it. Yeah, this is a rough battle. Oh, there is a little bit of auto save. Oh, or auto heal. Yeah, there's like a tiny bit of it. You just it definitely comes in it. in more useful later when you're uh, oh, God, it. when you're able to like make it so that you get more health items and stuff and you have like larger health. Damn it. I think it's mostly uh, a, a problem like really early on when you don't have like any buffs. When you have no drip. Right. <laughs> when you're swagless. You began the game with his zero swag. <laughs> uh, there's two important ways of improving your character. Swag and drip. So, well, there's swag and class. <laughs> drip is a, is a function of swag. <laughs> yes, that's right. It's derived. It's it's like it's like one of the stats that you have to level up. It's kind of like the difference between those two evolutions, uh, oh, yeah. the, like night and day one, or like the happy and mad one. I forget what their differences. Yeah, you have to you have to um, 
They can fly. Increase your your happiness with the um, class so for a certain point, um, and then evolve them during the day or night. Uh, if you want to get drip or swag, <laughs> Pokemon drip, Pokemon swag. How about I, I will say a thing it does kind of teach you early on very well is uh, to just once you see the enemies that like it it will give you one one level one enemies to kill easily for health. Yeah. And it is very much like these guys are here for health reasons. Do not get killed by them. Damn it. I feel like there is a way to hit. Like he he dodges your telekinesis, but there is a way to get him. So. There, you can oh. definitely get these guys with telekinesis. I think it's something where it's like you have to get them to dodge like once or something. Yeah, you might have to wait for them to uh, to throw their things or something like that. God, what was it? I think it's great. It might even be while they're charging their attack. Yeah, I think that's it. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, because they can't really Yeah, dodge. there we go. Yeah, because they're too busy. Not to see their own horse shit. Damn! You hit him so hard, you didn't even see the life bar go down to yeah. start playing the cutscene. <laughs> You ever knock an enemy back? You, you ever beat an enemy so hard I that they do that? I will be back. Why? Um, man, I love how that that boss is easier than than that first heavy guy. It, it really is just because it's like that first heavy guy is just there to like, all right, here's the basics. It's gonna suck because we're gonna throw a, a basically massive uh, bullet sponge at you to teach you the basics of, of fighting in this game. The hotline should be past the mail room. Man, there's all this delicious uh, help. Oh god damn it! I jumped down to the first floor thinking I had to go there to get it. Oh, you, uh, Golden Gutsel says if you throw twice in a row, you can usually hit. That becomes like a more useful strategy, I think, once you get a little extra. You get some like extra health, or not extra health, but you get like extra energy and stuff. All right, take this down. Mm -hmm. The situation in Cuba has been evaluated by the relevant authorities. The mysterious illness the affecting band. the staff at the U.S. Embassy in Havana was caused by sonic weaponry in the hands of a foreign power. Numerous personnel have oh, damaged I the forgot. Ear, this one is like a real event. expected to make a full recovery. Of course, the event also damaged if I remember the correctly. walls, but or like is based on a real event. Noise gun. <laughs> Thank God, no local doctors examined them first. Honestly, the odds an alternate item would show up inside a U.S. embassy. Talk about good luck, huh? <laughs> so much easier. To... Hey, are you still recording this? <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, it's like it was like a, a weird thing that like actually happened like uh, years ago. I think Havana syndrome. No, wait, this might be something different. But but it was a thing where it's like I looked it up at one point because I was interested, and it turned out that like, oh, this is like a weird, uh, like a real thing that's like a subject of conspiracies is that there was like some sort of like sound attack at a at in like a Cuban embassy. Havana syndrome. They just released a report. Oh, it is. It is Havana syndrome. Okay. The, when I looked it up, the thing that I found was related to Trump, and I was like, I think it was earlier than that, but maybe, <laughs> maybe Trump just brought it up again because you know he's an insane person. 
He would if anyone would revive a decades old conspiracy the theory can't for be far now. Because it was a half remembered. Because he watched the Chills video brain. about it. Yeah. He, he like watched a YouTube video about it and was like, You guys hear about this? Oh Donald Trump's god. gonna weigh in on the creep show YouTuber drama. Oh. oh my god. And I know when that hotline chamber rings. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> it is really easy to make hotline bling jokes all the time in this yeah. game though. I, I love this where it's just like trench, trench, custodian, custodian. <laughs> Oh, one of my favorite locations in this game. Green logic. Oh, oh god, it's so good. The light switch cord. Door marked with the black pyramid. Just this magic light switch cord, which you can teleport with, but you have to click it three times and then navigate this room. And the way they've been teasing no. this idea that, like, I've stayed at a lot of roadside motels across the country, on the road, on the run, under the radar. This feels like all of them, like something recognized from a dream. And it's just like, oh, do you ever notice that like weird hotels all look the same? Well, here's one that looks exactly like every hotel you've ever been in. Uh, I'm gonna be real quick right back. Rachel Nada was really concerned about Pathfinder's syndrome. Yeah, it's very good at like. I I like that they really committed to this like office environment and and did lots of great stuff to it. Um, I think it was a really good idea though that they did like they found an excuse to give you this other, uh, kind of like really lonely liminal space. Yeah, Jay didn't put up their BRB screen. I think they intend to truly be oh. right back. A true what? BRB. A faraway Mia. Hello. I'm I'm right here. Hello. Hello. Hi. Do you hear me? Yeah, you're just. Uh, I think the the first thing you said sounded like you were far away. Ah, uh, well now I'm. Now here. you're present. Here I am. Uh, I'm also back. Uh, but yeah, I like that you, get, you get sent here and you have to solve weird little puzzles, sometimes involving these rooms over here. Uh, Cute. And that it's just like, yeah, it's just this uh, hotel that we can't find the location Hello? of. Anyone here? Because it doesn't seem to exist, but it does exist somewhere in reality. <laughs> hmm. uh, and then this is when they introduce the concept of the rule of thirds in this game. And then being important to solving puzzles, like also still the boss battles. Mm. Oh, and there's the key. Uh, the, 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 the lighting key in here is so good. On it. It really does capture the feeling of just like the, the lighting is per even like them including like the little dust particles you would see in this kind of place. And this is like with the resolution turned down. Good reason to go and get this game is that you can actually play it at a higher resolution and see all the beautiful textures they made. Yeah. Yes, there's, there's a part where you hear tourists outside of the hotel talking about how the hotel is closed. 
complete <laughs> teens all over are doing the astral plane challenge. <laughs> Your teen may be teleporting to an unknown dimension with an object of power. <laughs> oh, did not see that hole there. A hotline will allow you to contact extra dimension. I the the way they pop out like those new now next ads <laughs> is really funny. <laughs> yeah. uh, by the way, in case you were wondering, chat, uh, you can't defeat these things. Uh, I, I, these things are so horrible to look at. They're, they're, they're so upsetting. They're such a they're good, really like, generic, upsetting. like, generic, oh, this is the enemy that you can't kill. This is the enemy you just have to avoid. Right, they, they do a good job of looking like, oh, you should get anything. Um. You're like, yeah, just avoid this thing. <laughs> It's great because looking at it just ruined my computer. Oh no! <laughs> oh yes, I am. There's a little chair I can jump down. Uh, sorry, I'm just checking because I know later in this game. There's a bunch of stuff hidden in these areas. But those are usually when the areas get really big. Compulsive weekly calls. <laughs> just like nagging I, you, just like, all right, you better call us once a week. <laughs> you never call anyone. It is a phone. The board. It's an object of power. It doesn't connect to any power. typical network. A direct line to the astral plane and the board. And my hypothesis is under the right conditions to other planes of existence as well. He is so hot. Thanks. Uh, there's no Quantum the Break 2 because Microsoft team, killed it. My management team. These people know the secrets of the Bureau as well as I do. Some even better. Darling, I love these, like, X-Files FMV cutscenes. Marshall. Marshall especially. My yeah, I see a lot that it's most of this is she just this group right of him me. walking she knows I don't like past this, ba this background of his own the only face smoking a cigarette, but right? I it's, love it. But things I love change it. when you become director. <laughs> I have it. The hotline. I can reach Trench. Well, listen to him. He feels more like an echo. An echo with important info. I need to get back to Emily. Emily! <laughs> People react strongly immediately starts when running. I tell them about you. <laughs> Is it too soon to tell Emily? She might be able to help. Oh, hey, a file I missed. Butt supplement. I have a little, little write up about the hotline phone. I do love its design. It's so good. So fucking cute. It's really adorable. Haha. <laughs> Butt. <laughs> On the butt, A W E. The butt, ah. The butt, ah. Ring, ring. It's Doctor Darling calling. <laughs> In 1978, a comms department intern heard the hotline ring. No, you never call. Going against every safety protocol in the manual. She never recovered, and the handful of witnesses required. Extensive memory repression therapy. It is a phone. It's an object of power. It doesn't connect to any typical network. A direct line to the astral plane and the board. And my hypothesis is, 
under the right conditions to other planes of existence as well. Ooh. Our very own Ouija board. <laughs> Only the director can answer it safely, and what he hears is kept classified. Oh man, if they get Lance Reddick on for the next one, that would rule. Oh yes, please. Oh, she looks so good. Oh. Oh, you know that's one. So, oh yeah. So now that we have the gotten the phone, we can actually like hear everything he says whenever he does those little like layovers. It took scenes. us a long time to learn how to stabilize the control points. So this is all stuff lines, that he had said to us meridians. earlier, but it was only yes. chunks and pieces of it. Darling found a way to soothe this. Oh, beast. I didn't even notice that. We discovered we must cleanse control points of all interference. It's my duty as the director, like Northmore before me. I like how even French, who's like this super serious house, character, is presented home. in this game. It's just like this guy who like here. also kind of like just took this Without job the because he just kind of had to. The oldest do. house would swallow us alive. We'd be sealed inside an endless labyrinth. No one would hear our screams. If an enemy ever managed to corrupt the control points, it'd be over fast, spreading like a cancer, leaping over the fire breaks like a crown of fire. They are the weak point. Darling's right about that. He's wrong about everything else. Dangerously wrong. Suspiciously wrong. Has he been compromised? It's a weird political intrigue between the two of them. Uh, I think this one. Something's coming. The whispers growing louder. This is kind of the first hint that worst Darling and, and uh, Trench were some of the first ones affected by the hits. For my sins, our sins. This threat could destroy Which really just a metaphor Euro, for paranoia and built, power. Destroy me. A web spun, toes is right. Place in control, too, you, you should have sex. In the corner <laughs> it should be a dating sim. Just <laughs> out of reach. I also have to agree, agree with. Clever. Six 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 V does. Doctor Darlene is a sussy baka. The facts, dimming my eyes. It's hard to tell. I need answers. I haven't heard back from Darling. In control two, you should have sex. Many people are saying this actually. I think we made it people the people are the people have spoken and they said the in control to Jesse Fade needs to get danger. it in. <laughs> it's my duty as director to keep the bureau. I safe. bought It'll little freezer pops What's done with alcohol in them at the store. No easy mm. fix. I'm going Magical to have one is a and it's going to survival. cause me to decide whether or not I'm going to post suffering. Okay, that works. Tory. To change things Do you know if anybody else is going? Yourself. See, that's the problem. I, I don't think I anybody else is going. I, which is it to say that I would not love to go to Pony I'm with just afraid. you? Because I'm, yeah. I'm like, I'm now at a point where I'm like, yeah, if you, if you're like, let's do it, I'll probably be like, all right, yeah, let's do it. But it would just be us. I mean, I love you. It would be really funny. Exactly. No, it would rule. We would be the christening. Yeah, that's true. Our well, uh, christening it. Yeah, you should. We're gonna we're gonna break a, a glass bottle in the bathroom. Let's do that. Okay. You definitely need to that. Oh yeah, 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 I gotta run this way. Uh, let's get back to our lesbian uh, boss wife, our lore wife. <laughs> our lore wife. Mossy, head of comms. Get his ID. The hiss got him. The hiss it got him. The hiss on. He oh. got hissed on. He got hissed on. I I do also love that like when you go from like throwing to your gun, your gun like chitters. Oh yeah. Like it, it like like do you see that? Uh, mm. well, let, me, let me find an enemy to throw this at. Hello, Wirt? No, I think behind you. So you throw that, 
and then like the gun like kind of like reforms as you pull it out. Wow, that's great. It's it's such a like small detail, but it works so well to like emphasize. Yeah, this is like a weird fucked up paranormal. Like this isn't a gun. Like yeah, it functionally works in this game as a gun, but it's a weird gun. <laughs> so it's cool. Uh, I think Bonehead Jill is right about who the romanceable interests should be. Uh, for sure. Uh, Darling Pope, Refrigerator, Marshall. Uh, yes, but also, none of those are Mold Lady, so one of them needs to be Mold Lady. In my IMO. Um... I think I'm probably gonna. I was. I was actually. Tonight. I was actually just about to be like, let's talk to Pope and then call it an eve. Okay. If, down, let's if, do if it. you are down to talk to Pope first. I'll talk to Pope first. Okay. Uh, Whoa, Jesus! <laughs> there was a guy. Time for a girlfriend check-in. Time to process. Did you get the hotline? I mean, how is it out there? The comms, the hiss. Sorry, you made it. Emily? <laughs> Mold is the end in milk. She is Mold literally is a candy milk. I'm in milk. Let's talk. Of course. Look at her look down embarrassed. I got the hotline. I can excited. make out what Judge is saying now. Incredible. What did he say? He talked about his management team. People who knew the Bureau of Secrets. Your boss darling. Tomasi, but he's gone. He's gone. Salvador? He's the head of security. And Marshall? Helen Marshall is head of operations. Yeah. She's tough. Ex-CIA. She took her rangers and went to the research oh, yeah, to that's security right. HRA production. Sure. She hasn't yeah. come back. A lot of, uh, She's the Somebody military much. The other sectors. Hello? How do I get there? <laughs> I guess you'll have to do it next time, Mia. Yeah. You can perform a directorial <laughs> override to lift it, but that can only be done in the maintenance sector. Normally, you take the sector elevator down there. It connects all the sectors, but it won't work while the lockdown is in effect. We already got past one lockdown. Maybe I can... It's normal for your wife to do steroids. Yeah. Jesse, normalize so, your wife to no do steroids. Crap. No Normalize a steroid wife. Extreme situation. You are doing so steroids, but she's not, well. I guess. All that in the history seems to be. There's no really drug good. test for I love. I would love to run some tests on you. I had to the kids to be We could find out something. Do you even yell like the lady in that thing? Tests. <laughs> I don't know. She might find out about you. But I wouldn't mind understanding more myself. I love her just being like, do you okay. want to run tests? If you think it will help. Great. I'll check the internal documentation for any lockdown bypasses. We need to get these sectors open to locate Darling and Marshall. And I'll look for a way inside the maintenance sector. The sooner we find one, the sooner I reach this override. Oh. Do you remember if it's in the main game or in one of the DLCs that we actually go underneath the house? Oh, um, so I actually haven't played the DLC, but if you're talking about the place where you meet Adi because he's on vacation and you can't find him. Yeah. Um, that, yes, that is definitely game. in the main game. Okay, yeah. Because yeah. that's that's Cause what I that shot it. is, 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 is him in that place. And I can only describe it as underneath the house. Yeah, but I feel like that's visually what it's trying to to provoke for sure. Oh, I'm so excited to get to this room. There's like a small detail that you can find in this room that's really cool. All right, and we have four ability points. Do you hear that? Someone's singing. Where is it coming from? It <laughs> ignores you. <laughs> Alright, so we'll go talk to her. Sounds like it's coming from the elevator. Objects up to 20 feet. Bullshit. 
We never recorded any distance over five. Obviously, you never read the P6 data. <laughs> These fucking nerds. <laughs> The fact that they're constantly arguing. Oh, hey, let's build a shotgun. Alright, we built a shotgun. And then you can also get mods here. Uh, mods? Uh, mods, please. <laughs> right. Hello, mods? Jay's building. Wait. Mods? Jay's building a shotgun? Hello? So let's uh, open up some health. Um, let's increase launch damage because it's really useful. So uh, yeah, let's add some energy to the mix. Giving Jesse all her kibbles. Yeah, we're, we're giving her we're giving her a little extra, but her little her little extra points, and fuck it, let's uh, let's uh, let's upgrade some melee damage. Um, oh yeah, I forgot that there's also these, which are just like things you can get and you'll get rewarded with like little little oh, pop buttons. The buttons. little like temp temporary achievements. Yeah. And it's just like, go to this area and use this weapon or do this thing or kill this many enemies with a headshot. Just just like bonus things. Um, so I, there we go. There we go, now we have two weapons. Oh, here's them explaining the, the board countermeasures. The board countermeasures. Does those, yeah, like, it, it's a big reason why I like it is it definitely takes its cues from, like, I, I call it creepypasta culture because SCP kind of falls under that. But it's like yeah. specifically the like internet, like internet urban legend stories. Uh, I think. Okay, I guess it does just auto save. For some reason, I I remembered it being a game where you had to like also manually save before you quit. Mm. Well, that could be different between the the different versions. That's true. Yeah, I did play it on console. But yeah, I think I'm gonna call it. Thanks for joining everyone. I am absolutely gonna keep playing this next week, especially now that I know how to stream it yeah. without causing my computer to puke. It's totally uh, uh Do either of y'all have anything to promote? It's, it's Pride this weekend. Go be, it's go do gay shit. Go suck a dick in public. Yeah, go, go, <laughs> go get canceled in, in honor of Pride. Go get canceled. Chat, just get canceled, just like a little bit. Uh, yeah. Just get a little bit, suck a little dick, get a little canceled. Mm -hmm. You can do both on the same day. You'll like uh, have seven years good pride. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Seven years no no discourse. Seven years no discourse. This is yeah. We're gonna be doing our own rituals of power in order to stop having discourse. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Uh, but thank you all for joining. Nothing uh, is a cool Yeah, thanks for hanging with us. Have a good night. Yeah, I had a great time. Bye. Good night. Bye.